and this magnetic field uh, transfer they, due to induction. That is mutual induction. This uh, magnetic field or the magnetic flux penetrates into the secondary coil, which results in the uh, induced AF or also in the induced current that they result the ball in the secondary coil HF flows. So this is the basic principle of wireless electricity. Then the types of technology. So there are two types of uh, uh, technology. One is near field technology, the other one is far field technology. In the near field technology, there are three methods. One is inductive coupling, the resonant inductive coupling, and air ionization. And in the far field technology, there is two methods. One is microwave transmission and laser power, laser flow power transmission. I will discuss about the resonant inductive coupling in my talk. And uh, uh, because of, uh, because of less time. And I am also not uh, prepared well for uh, all of this, so I am on only going to discuss about the regional inductive coupling in my talk. The first inductive coupling, uh, very shortly, we will discuss it uh, very, uh, very shortly. So it works on the principle of electromagnetic induction. Here we see this is the red color, is the primary coil, and this is the secondary coil. And when we give a to the primary coil, then the magnetic field lines are generated across the primary coil. And when we put another coil, secondary coil, near to the primary coil, due to mutual induction, these magnetic lines of course penetrate into the secondary, to the secondary coil. And we know the what is the, the magnetic flux? The magnetic flux is the rate of, is the amount of magnetic field vector passing per unit area. That is phi is equal to V dot Ds. The, 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 the large, if the large amount of magnetic field line supports passes into the secondary coil, then we get the electricity or induced effect to the secondary coil. This is the basic principle of uh, our inductive coupling. So it works on the principle of electromagnetic induction as I said. So here the primary coil and the secondary coil are not connected to where the energy transfer due to mutual induction. Uh, this principle is uh, used in the transformer. We, uh, we see the transformer, the two primary and secondary coil are not connected. There is an air gap between these two. So it works on the principle of inductive coupling. Then the resonant inductive coupling. The, uh, here, the capacitor and here they are the two pictures. In the first picture, there is a AC source which is connected to the capacitor and the inductor. And another uh, circuit is very, uh, is very close to it that is con it has consists of an inductor and capacitor. Here the capacitor and inductor function resonator. If the capacitor and inductor are commonly known as or they join to form a resonator, the charge oscillates between the inductor as a magnetic field and the capacitor as an electric field. We know the uh, capacitor in the capacitor stores the charge. Then it then the uh, it oscillates the charge in, in form of electric field. And the inductor, in the, and the inductor, the charge oscillates in the form of magnetic field. So here the capacitor and inductor both form a resonator. So these types of oscillation is called as resonance, resonance if the reactance of the inductor and capacitor is equal. When uh, the reactance of inductor and capacitor becomes equal, then this condition, then only this condition is known as resonance. And during the condition of resonance, the power transfer is maximum. And the efficiency is about uh, 80, uh, 90 to 97 percent. Only 3% is not second phase <coughs> So, I, I am going to uh, get the topic by, the, by using this picture. Uh, here there is a numbering from 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Uh, 1 is the uh, power supply. Then 2 is the transmitting coil which is also known as the primary coil. Then these are the magnetic lines of course. Uh, sorry, the magnetic field lines. And this is the uh, receiving coil. And height is the number of the status of the battery, which is showing that the laptop is still charging. So here is the primary source which is connected to a primary here is the power source which is connected to the primary coil. When we give when we apply power or when we apply DC current to the current to the primary coil, uh, then the uh, then either then the, uh, due to the uh due to the electromagnetic induction, uh, the magnetic lines of force generated across the primary coil. And at the resonant condition, resonant condition means when the, uh, cap, uh, uh, when the reactance of the capacitor and as well as the inductor are same, then the, uh, then the maximum transfer of magnetic lines of force takes uh, place, that is the amount of magnetic field generated will be received by the secondary coil. So in this case, here we see there is no air connection between the primary and secondary coil, still the laptop is charging. So this is the main concept of wireless electricity or the resonant inductive method. So here, uh, now we will see what will happen in the primary coil. 
So there is two coil, one is primary coil and another one is secondary coil. In the primary coil, when power is switched to the first coil, it converts the electric the electricity into magnetic field, which is oscillating at a particular frequency. This is the primary coil. When we apply electric current to the primary coil, then the electric current is transferred into the it is converted into the magnetic field, and the magnetic field are oscillating at a particular frequency. And in the secondary coil, the secondary coil at the receiving end converts the oscillating magnetic field into electricity. The secondary coil uh, receives the magnetic field, magnetic field lines, then it converts the uh, magnetic field into the electricity. And in, the, in, in this power transmission, as there is a magnetic field, or the power transmitter in terms of magnetic field, hence uh, the environment remains unaffected because our Many of the system are uh, do not interact very well with the magnetic field as compared to the electric field or AC current. If we say the mathematical derivation part, the uh, we know the, the charge in the, uh, the charge in the, the, the change in force in the secondary coil created by the induction and when we change the uh, when we uh, uh, when we apply uh, electricity to the primary coil, then due to mutual induction, the secondary in the secondary coil like where is the where, uh, EMF is induced and the, the, the magnitude of induced EMF is given by minus d phi by dt and we know phi is equal to what? phi is the uh, magnetic flux and from the cross law magnetostatic we know phi is equal to integration of phi dot ds so then the amount of flux passing per unit uh, uh, passing per unit time is given by d phi by dt then it happens and uh, the d phi is v dot d s divided by dt. Here there is a n, n is the number of ton of the secondary coil. If you increase the number of ton, then the magnetic field also increases as a result. We get the induced EMF or the value of the induced EMF is increases. And the negative sign is due to Landis law. As you know, the direction of uh, induced EMF is opposite to the uh, field. And, uh, and I will say, uh, I will say, tell, a, tell about the concept of resonance and when the frequency of the uh, so the, when the frequency is same, that is when it is in the resonant condition, then uh, then only the maximum amount of power transfer takes place, and the resonant frequency is given by omega is equal to 1 by root over of LC, or you can say F is equal to 1 by 2 pi into 1 by root over of LC. So this is the block diagram. So there is a DC supply which is primarily, primarily defined into the oscillator. In the oscillator there is two things, one is the inductor and the capacitor. The inductor changes the DC supply into AC supply, then, the, then it is going to discharge. It discharge in the form of a sinusoidal wave. Or the, the, the inductor in the uh, circuit receives the sinusoidal wave that the electric, in the electric signal or the electric current, then it stores it in the form of magnetic field. Then the magnetic field of the primary coil is transferred into the secondary coil. In the secondary coil, there is a rectifier to rectify the, uh, the voltage. If the, the secondary coil uh, converts the magnetic field to electric field, then the rectifier rectifies the voltage and uh, then we give it to the voltage regulator. Then the voltage regulator, after, uh, in the voltage regulator, we regulate the voltage and give it to the electronic equipment as per the next. So this is the circuit of inductance, uh, uh, resonant inductive discharging. So here is the primary source or the power supply which is, uh, to which the primary uh, coil is attached. And in the laptop there is a secondary coil, there is a two mobile phone to which two secondary coils are attached. When we give power supply to the primary coil, then, then the, at the region and condition, the power transfer in the, in the term of magnetic field or in the form of magnetic field, the power is transferred from the primary coil to the secondary coil. And in the secondary coil, there is other arrangement which can convert it into the electric current. Then the DC supply is given to the laptop, here is the mobile and the display. As a result, uh, we are not using any words, but the laptop is still charging, the mobile phones are still charging. The inductive uh, charging uses the electromagnetic field to transfer the energy between two objects. Here we see that is uh, the electric field and magnetic field. So I say. The inductive uh, charging uses the concept of electromagnetic field to transport the energy between two objects. In the primary coil, the electric field is converted into magnetic field and the magnetic field is transferred into the secondary coil. Then the greater distance can be achieved by using the resonant inductive coupling. By this method, we can 
uh, uh, we can uh, cover a greater distance, uh, greater distance as compared to inductive method. In the inductive method, the distance coverage is very low. That is, we have to, uh, for, uh, for an example, uh, on a, this is the charger, we have to, uh, this is the wireless charger and this is the mobile phone. If we want to charge the mobile phone, we have to put the mobile phone above it, then the charging takes place. This is the concept of inductive, inductive method. Inductive method. But in the uh, Richardson inductive method, it works in a greater distance as compared to the inductive method. Uh, I can say within a uh, building, uh, we can apply this within the building, but for large communication, this is not so much effective. The Richardson inductive coupling or electrodynamic induction is the near field wireless transmission between the two coils that are taught to resonate at the same frequency. This is the most important when they resonate at the same frequency, then the transfer of power, maximum transfer of power takes place. Then there is a third technique in the near power technique that is air ionization. I am not giving a detail about that, I will just give you a brief detail about that. Uh, this is the lowest technique uh, under the near field transfer technique because in this case we use the ionized air. The air has to be ionized to transfer the magnetic field from one point to another point. But this is uh, practically not possible because uh, air only ionizes when it is there is a high field. So the natural example of lightning, the lightning it takes place in the uh, through the techniques of air ionization. Now it is not feasible for practical implication. But we can use the, uh, the previous method that is the resonant inductive method for our daily uses. Then the applications of wireless electricity. The wireless charging beds for, uh, for the smartphones and the electric vehicle are popular consumer application of wireless electricity. Nowadays, there are many techniques or uh, many uh, wireless charging pads are available in the market, such as the, uh, the wireless static smartphones and electric vehicles. Uh, then the wireless power transfer is also being uh, explored for the medical device, the industrial autom uh, automation, and even space exploration. It is used in this uh, uh, in a medical device and it is also industrial automation. The concept of electricity or wireless electricity via magnetic resonance is gaining. Uh, is getting attraction, attraction is attraction for various applications. The advantages are it is more reliable than our uh, traditional technique. It is more environmental friendly because as the as the power is transferred in the form of magnetic field, it really does not it not harm to the environment. So we can we can get electricity anywhere without waste. Nowadays, there are so many villages to which the electricity is not uh, given. But by using this method, uh, we can provide electricity to uh, many areas without, without using waste. The magnetic resonance are particularly suitable for everyday application because most of the common materials do not interact with the magnetic field. So, interaction with the environmental object are softer even further. What I tell earlier, the magnetic resonance are particularly suitable for every application because the most of the common materials do not interact with the, uh, with the magnetic field. So it is uh, safe and uh, environmental friendly. Then conclusion, the transmission of power with that we are is not a theory but very a possibility, it is now a reality. Now in the previous days we think about that this is, a, this is possible to happen but nowadays it is really happening. Now it is a reality. So the electric energy can be economically transmitted without the wires to any terrestrial distance. But by using this method, we can transmit the electricity without wires to various areas. So many of the research, many researchers have established in numerous observational experiment and measurement and qualitative and quantitative. And the wireless transmission of electricity have tremendous merits, like the transmission of integrity uh, for the low loss about 90 about 90 to 97 percent. Uh, that I am telling this before. Right? In, in this case, the, the, the powerless is very much less. But in case of uh, uh, where the, our, our traditional method, the powerless is very much. That is only 30 to 40 percent efficient. Uh, and it can be transmitted to anywhere in the globe at eliminated need of inefficient, constant capital intensive grid of capital numbers. 